They call them the dolls, but they're anything but. Hey, did you see that they found that one ring card from Magic the Gathering? Here's why I, I thought that it would be printed in English. When I saw a picture of the one ring card, I'm like, I, what happens if somebody plays that shit on you during like, uh, you know, a modern event or something like that? I'm going to be picking it up. Speak, friend, and enter. Like, what, what do I know? Judge? <laughs> to, hang on. I, this is a, an Elvish system. I know this. By the way, we're screwed today. $187 million. Reading the card explains the card. Uh, yeah, the, reading the card explains the card. Melon, 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 Kate Blanchett, Galadriel, Kate Blanchett, Galadriel, Amazon spent $100 million per episode on the show and it freaking flopped. That's what it says to me. Okay, um... Speaking of that, do you see The Witcher Season 3 came out? I haven't seen anybody talk... Witcher Season 3, nobody's talking about it. Secret Invasion, nobody's talking about it. Is TV cooked? Now that Succession is done, is TV cooked? But the bear is holding strong, man. That's the only thing. You ever... You know the, the image of, like, um... All the landlords... And it says they're like fighting a war. The war is like property tax, upkeep, maintenance, uh, like landscaping costs. And then like at the top is a paradise and it's the renters enjoying themselves. That's what TV is like right now. It's just the bear at the bottom. I don't even know what's at the top. Like barbecue showdown <laughs> on Netflix. Anyway. Tradle. This is like an, it's an island nation, um, I'm going to guess. They export $123 million of non-filleted frozen fish and $23 million worth of cars. Kind of interesting. Calcium phosphates, I don't know enough about like geology to know what's going on there. Enzymes, drafting tools, medical instruments... 187 million is like so small. Is Bermuda like a possibility? I would assume that they export like um, tax avoidance strategies. Okay, we're not even. <laughs> it's uh, I. You know what this was? My heart didn't want to believe that we were in the South Pacific. Now that I've guessed Bermuda, I know that we're in the South Pacific, and I'm annoyed. Um, Thirteen thousand kilometers from Bermuda. In the northwest, sorry, southwest. Um, well, I mean, you got to go straight into like, um, like Vanuatu. Here we go. North of Vanuatu. Why am I typing Wellington? Is that a thing? <laughs> Is American Samoa? Could it be American Samoa? No. I, by the way, I don't know the position relative to each other of these islands. So like we're, we're semi cooked here. Don't get me wrong. How about Christmas Island? We already had it. it we had that one before. Wallace and Fortuna. Christmas Island. Kiribati. That's one that doesn't always pop into my brain. It's not Kiribati. It's Aruba place. <laughs> oh, that's in the Atlantic, apparently. That makes sense. The Beach Boys sang about it. Um, it's directly west of Aruba. Um, French Polynesia. No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Me being from the POV, what I say when I get something wrong in Tradle, open parentheses, I'm from New Zealand. Okay, well, that, that's just really tough, honestly. That's just a tough one. Fair enough. Start me off on Globla. I mean, I'll, I'll go crazy with you on Globla. I'm not afraid to type... Now, Uru, Look, listen, I'm not going to beat myself up over not getting that on Tradle. No country has ever been more in the middle of nowhere. 
with no disrespect, you don't control like the geographic position of, you know, your country. But like, this is the middle of nowhere. I'm sorry to say it's just it's a like, look at this thing. What even is that? It's like a trapezoid in the middle. <laughs> the, the, the earth, when, when the earth globe is centered on Nauru, it looks like a planet that's not earth because there's no land. I mean, there's land, but it's Australia. Anyway, so it's 11,000 kilometers away. Take me to Panama. It's 180 kilometers from Panama. That was great estimation because we knew that Bermuda was 13,000 kilometers away. So we, we pulled it back here. But it's not adjacent. It's because it's Honduras. Oh, <laughs> it's Nicaragua. Oh, he's crazy. That's a good one. Especially considering the out of left field guess to begin with. World law. Nauru is three miles across. That's crazy. Can you imagine being like a, a, a middle distance runner and being like, oh, how was your run today? It was pretty good. I ran back and forth across the diameter of my country four times. Like, yeah, it was my long run day. I ran around the circumference of my country twice. It's a small one today. This looks like a country in northern or western or eastern Africa. <laughs> I'm going to say this is Burkina Faso. It's very close. It's east of Burkina Faso. It's Burkina Faso. Ghana, Senegal, Togo. Togo looks like Saskatchewan. This could be... How close is it? It's like we're 94. It's a little further away. I'm going to go Nigeria then. And I hope it's not more east of Nigeria because th that's where I get lost. Okay, it's literally just Nigeria. I don't want to go off on a rant here, but does anybody else think that Togo is the Saskatchewan of Africa? We might be cooked today, lads. Weekend of October 24th, 1986. Freaking Giada De Laurentiis' dad had a movie that came out here. Made $2 million. Okay, this is crazy. A Paramount movie, it lost 9% in week five. Those are legs and it knows how to use them. It stars Paul Hogan. <laughs> it's Crocodile Dundee, Crocodile. It's Crocodile Dundee one. Hey, there's a little of him in all of us. Macros, can I get the confirmation on that? Can I get a fact check? At first I thought this was Paul Newman and I was like, that's tough. Paul Hogan has only been in like four movies. It's... Crocodile Dundee 1 through 3, and then a Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles. Touchstone Pictures, second week, great legs. But honestly, movies had better legs in the 80s. Legs it refers to uh, how little they lose in subsequent weeks after their opening at the box office. Back in the 80s and the 90s, there wasn't such a culture of like seeing a movie opening weekend and then like ignoring it forever. In the 2000s, for a blockbuster, it was fairly standard to have like a 50% drop week to week. But I think that's because there were different options. Like people had stuff to do. In the 80s, if you didn't see like E.T. the week it opened, you were like, whatever, I'll catch it like week seven or whatever. Anyway. Touchstone Pictures. Stars Paul Newman. <laughs> The only Paul Newman movie I really know is like Cool Hand Luke. See you in hell. Uh, the Sting, that's another one. Genre, drama, tagline. The hustler isn't what he used to be, but he has the next best thing. 
a kid who is the hustler. <laughs> cool hand Luke 2. Actor 2. Tom Cruise cocktail? Oh. The practice? Not the practice. The firm. The firm? Oh, I got to come back to this, man. New World. Actor. C. Thomas Howell. It's fucking Beethoven, man. Nope. Okay. Tagline. He didn't give up. He got down. I'm fucked, man. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> What is Breakin' 2? Electric Boogaloo? What is... What's the sequel to Saturday Night Fever? <laughs> Saturday Night Fever 2? Ray Don Chong? Oh, you gotta reveal all hints for me on this one. A Caucasian prospective grad student's affluent family won't pay his way through law school. <laughs> I'm not touching this one! Oh my god! He what? Wait, this is the one that everyone tells me to watch the trailer of on, on stream, right? I'm not touching this one. He takes tanning pills to darken his skin. He soon gets more than he bargained for. I don't know, because he kind of bargained for, like, whatever he got, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, how about this is a 1% drop in week three? Oh, man. Kathleen Turner. It's the War of the Roses. I'm, I'm cooked this week, man. Baby geniuses? Tagline. Knowing what you know now, what would you do differently? Also starring Nicolas Cage. Reveal all hints. Peggy Sue faints at a high school reunion. When she faints, when she wakes up, she finds herself in her own past just before she finished school. What is Peggy Sue got married? I've, I've never seen it, but I've, I've heard of it. Well, we're going to put up like a, like a 200 spot this week. Actor, Mark Price. Tagline, what are you afraid of? It's only rock and roll. Actor two, Tony Fields. Reveal all hints. I'm going to assume the director is um, Dino De Laurentiis. Nope, Charles Martin Smith. Eddie Weinbauer, a metalhead teen who was bullied at school, looks to his heavy metal superstar idol, Sammy Kerr, for guidance. When Kerr is killed in a hotel fire, Eddie becomes the recipient of the only copy of Kerr's unreleased album, which, when played backwards, brings Sammy back to life. As Halloween approaches, Eddie begins to understand this isn't only rock and roll, it's life and death. I'm going to give up on that one. That one is called Trick or Treat. I have never heard of it, quite frankly. 80s were kind of crazy. Gene Simmons, you're not wrong. Budget none. Made, made seven milli on a, on a none budget. That's pretty good. We have, what, two, two guesses left? Box office game rocked me here. Paul Newman. Tom Cruise. <laughs> Actor three. Mary Elizabeth Mastron, Mastrantonio? <laughs> Tom Cruise movie, total gross, 13 million, week two? Touch the hustler isn't who he used to be. Reveal all hints. Former pool hustler, fast Eddie Felsen, decides he wants to return to the game by taking a pupil. He meets talented but green Vincent Loria and proposes a partnership as they tour pool halls. Eddie teaches Vincent the tricks of scamming. Oh, bro, director Martin Scorsese? I don't, I don't know it. Newman, Cruz. The movie is called The Color of Money. Okay, I've heard of it. I've heard of it. But I've never, I've never seen it. 
It is crazy Tom Cruise was making movies two years before I was born. His ass has got a new movie coming out this weekend. Apparently it's another Mission Impossible. Don't talk to me about today's scores, by the way. Oh, wait, I didn't even, I still have one more. By the way, I refuse to answer it. That's right. 20th percentile today, total score 160. Pretty bad. It's Scorsese's third worst movie, so it's still pretty good. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Cine to Nerdle. What's Scorsese's worst movie? Is it the one about Tibet? Kundun? New York, New York, Boxcar Bertha? The Irishman? Come on! Really, The Irishman? Ant-Man and the Wasp, maybe? Robin Hood. That's a good one. Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. <laughs> Matt Reeves, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. Michael Sarah, Everything is Awesome. Okay, we can do this. Everything is Awesome. Lego. Probably Michael Sarah. I feel like Crazy Glue Hard Hat is one as well. You, okay, I see Michael, Sarah, Youth in Revolt. Ah, Robin Spoof, Dave Chappelle. This would be Robin Hood. Everything is awesome. Lego. Okay, what have I done? Matt Reeves, Flood. Zoe Kravitz is Catwoman. We got, okay. We're, we're actually killing it. This must be Lego Batman. Holy cow, I wouldn't even know what I was doing, okay? But we got there. This is Robin Hood Men in Tights. This is The Batman, directed by Matt Reeves. This is Michael Sarah Youth in Revolt, where he has he does like a little Stefan Urkel on himself, and his alter ego is a Lothario with a mustache. And then this is Lego, the Lego movie, and this is Lego Batman. Is this correct? Absolutely correct. I forgot there was a flood in the Batman. Wait till you see the second one. They're going to introduce the Covenant. Sorry. Horrible Bosses. What are movies? Movies with Charlie Day. Horrible Bosses, Fist Fight, Pacific Rim, and another one we'll find in a second, okay? Uh, children's movies. Power, well, I guess Power Rangers is not, I don't want to call it a children's movie necessarily. Simpsons movie, movies based on children's properties. Cartoon films. Cartoon f movies based on television shows. Another round, movies with Mads Mikkelsen. Foreign films. Half Nelson, movies with Ryan Gosling. Bruce Almighty, movies with Jennifer Aniston. Ha! Bruce Almighty, Office Space, Murder Mystery. Ooh, connect me. Getting the connection is like the most important thing that you could get. Okay. Movies with Charlie Day. His ass. I don't know what else he's in here. It's not another round. It's probably not Spy Kids. It's definitely not Half Nelson. He could easily be in these because I don't know what they are. Now, let's think about this, okay? Movies with Elizabeth Banks. Movies with Ron Livingston. Ron Livingston? He could be in the Simpsons movie. Maybe, right, just give me a second here. What, 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 what is, what's going on here? Pacific Rim scary movie. Movies with movie in the title. Ah! <laughs> Oh, uh, but how am I, wait, shapes? I'm shapes? One second here. Movies with movie in the title. That means that Charlie Day was in one of these. He's probably in the Lego movie. Oh, I'm insane. <laughs> but movies about teachers. Fist fight, 
Another Round is about teachers. Half Nelson is about teachers. I guess Freedom Writers is about teachers. And then Pacific Rim, Spy Kids, Power Rangers, Real Steel. Movies where big robots fight. Th theme, mechs. Movie entitled Jennifer Aniston, School Teacher Charlie Day. What can I say? <laughs> what can I say? It feels good after getting destroyed on box office game. Movie to movie. From Evil Dead 2 to Bo is Afraid. This is so doable. Even though I don't know the cast of Bo is Afraid very well. Here's what you, I, I know exactly what you got to do. You do it in reverse. And then you have to get to Spider-Man. It's a great cast here. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not going to bore you by telling you my favorite Tyrone Benskin film. So let me, let me think here for a second. We're trying to get to Spider-Man. Let's just spitball a little bit, okay? Joaquin Phoenix, Joker, obviously. Her, Scarlett Johansson. We're trying to get to, to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I don't know. You know what? Bruce Campbell has a cameo. <laughs> In Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. You motherfucker, you. Joaquin Phoenix. Her. And yeah, I'm using uh, Marvel movies now. You know why? Because it's fucking... We got a lot of dolls to get through. <laughs> Better to Cumberbatch. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Bruce Campbell. Evil Dead 2. Now, it's not the shortest, but... And you're right, there was a Sam Raimi connection there. So true. Evil Dead 2, Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell? Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, Bill Hader. Okay, well, fucking... I didn't see Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, okay? I'm an adult. I know you're like, you're an adult and you saw it? Yeah, but you fucking, there's a difference because you saw it when you were a kid, asshole. I was already an adult when that shit came out. You were like eight when it came out. Now you're an adult. You got fucking grandsoned into it. I got grandfathered out of it. Guess the game. Okay, old ass. <clears throat> This is Animal Crossing 1. Metacritic score of 94. It's a Persona game. This is Persona 4. Also known as Shin Megami Tensei Persona 4. It's originally on the Dreamcast. This is Jet Set Radio Future. This is Jet Grind Radio. Whatever. <laughs> Same shit. Jet said Radio Future was the Xbox one, right? We're doing okay today, except for box office game. And Nauru, that was like borderline impossible. Okay, can you guess? Three average guesses for this cover art. This is Project Diva F. Um, I literally just don't have a guess. I don't have a guess, so I'm skipping. This shit be looking like Dark Cloud. <laughs> this looks like a, a Final Fantasy, maybe, for the GameCube, like Crystal Chronicles. No, okay, um, I don't know. Skip me. That looks like a chocobo with a, with a damn shot. There's a Monster Hunter! Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. The Monster Hunter World.
This is a monster hunter, bro. Monster hunter. <laughs> it's a monster hunter of some sort. Monster hunter 4 ultimate. Monster hunter 3 ultimate. Monster hunter. We've done all the other ones. Give me rise. It's Monster Hunter Rise. There you go, from 2021. We got there. I don't know which one came first. As soon as they get out of the numbers, like, I got, I got no clue, man. At least my ass wasn't, like, Okami. That's what I wanted to type is Okami. Guess the game from the artwork. Four average guesses. Couldn't tell you. Beauty and the Beast Remastered. Prince of Persia. The Sands of Time. Eat my shit. <laughs> oh, you put some 2003 games up there. I got a, I got a good shot. Don't even. Look at this, man. Want a gorgeous deck? Teach me. Can you teach me how to have a fucking deck that's so fucking gorgeous? Dark Souls 2. It's a third person game. The more greens we can get, the better. A third person game from post 2014. That's tough. <laughs> that's borderline impossible. Um. Could, this is the anthem, throw your damn hands up. So third person game is newer than 2019. It's getting even harder. It's Red Dead Redemption 2. It's from earlier. That's from earlier. It's Star Wars Battlefront 2. See, the thing is, that's not from 2005. That's from probably 2016, so it was still a bad guess. Don't get me wrong. Um... A third-person game that is not a shooter. And it's not a role-playing game or an adventure. What the hell is it? Third-person platformer. It's a third-person platformer called Yuka. It's a, third, a hat in time. It's a hat in time. It's, you know what? There's something here. There is something here. It's, it's a, either... An indie or a platform game, or perhaps both. I need a clue, man. I'm cooked. It's from 2020. It's a third-person game from 2020. Oxen free. It is made in Unity, okay. And it is... It's an indie game from 2020... Made in Unity, in the third person. It's Five Nights at Freddy's Four. Oh, <laughs> it's I don't know. Mom, it's the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. It's um, Polytopia. It's probably Chicken Police. In the sports platformer, 2020 came out for fucking everything developed in Unity. Piece of crap. Good guess. If you got a good guess, that's tough. Weirdly enough, this is what it's like to be older. When you reach my age, it's actually easier to get something from 20 years ago than it is to get something from 20 minutes ago. I don't, I'm not a neurologist. I don't understand why. I'm just saying that it's the, it's the damn truth. One word movie from 2009. It's a comedy romance. I'm going to get this. Critics loved it. Audience mildly liked it. It means it's probably really good. But I don't know what it is immediately. Vic, it's not one word. Let's call it Vicky Cristina Barcelona, though. At least the year is right. Let's keep my mind in the right domain. 
A film so tuned into the pre-collegiate experience that scenes which play as comedy to audiences will land as harrowing tragedy to others. Okay. Um, it is not super bad. It's from 2007. And it's not Juno. It's from like 2007. Pre-collegiate experience. Pre-collegiate experience from 2009. Pass me. The messages about silver linings and lousy jobs. I believe this is Adventureland. Adventureland. We got there. No problem. You don't hear people talk that much about Adventureland anymore. I know why. Because critics loved it and the audience was like, wait a minute, this isn't super bad too. It's a good movie, but it's not the same kind of, of comedy. It, the cast looks like it's kind of like a, a zombie land, super bad a gross out sort of like laugh out loud comedy, but actually it's just like, it's a, a coming of age pseudo Wes Anderson sort of thing. Fair enough. I saw it for sure. Okay, it's Chrono Photo. Why are the critics so out of touch? Because they watch movies like for a living, so they have higher standards than the average person who watches like one movie a week and prefers to, by and large, just see something that's familiar to them. Oh, sorry, I meant because um, they're sipping on champagne on their, on their huge salaries, so they can't uh, freaking, um, uh, they just want to, they want you to be bored. They want you to waste your money on foreign films that make $300,000 total at the box office. They have an agenda to stop the flash from setting records. Speaking of records, okay? We've got an HMV, and most of the store is dedicated to vinyl. Pre-cassette tapes, but the fashion definitely doesn't look like 60s. Fashion to me looks like late 70s. I'm going to say 1979 in Liverpool. 1985. Okay, fair enough. Malaysian Trades Union Congress. World population, world births per year. During 1969, 123 million babies were born. I say it's 1970. <laughs> 1973. They got they got outdated uh, stats. This is 1967. 1966. It's Bill Clinton pre-veganism. We have to imagine. I mean, it, it, this thing is, I'm like. I'm a little fuzzy on the details. So, there was Desert Storm. Desert Storm was that not during the F Bush Senior administration. And then, I remember coming home from uh, a restaurant with my grandparents. They turned on the news, and Bill Clinton was like, we're dropping bombs on Iraq. And I was like, oh my God, it's World War III. Because I was like nine. Um, so I do feel like this is like 1997. I don't feel like this is the early 90s. All right, let's split the difference on that one. A restaurant like Subway. I don't even want to tell you that I 100% remember that the um, restaurant we went to was Nichols, which was Celine Dion's chain restaurant that had opened a location in my, in my hometown. This is uh, pre-Great Depression, 1925. Dude, we can't break 4,000 here. It's not possible. 3,900? I mean, I'll, I'll take it, but a little washed on Chrono Photo lately. Shit is pissing me off. Presented by Dylan Staples, heir to the Staples Business Depot empire. Like, what is this shit? What is this? It looks like a medieval times restaurant or like a California pizza kitchen in the Magic Kingdom. Like, I don't understand what I'm looking at here. What is it? It's crap. It's not even a good co-buying opportunity with whatever that site was called. Also, I'm being a hater, but this... 
I, I guess this is the driveway and this is the path. All right, never mind. I was going to say, I don't want to back into this fucking italicized driveway. Pain in the ass, man. This is a restaurant. This is like Flynn's sneaky restaurant at Disneyland. With Rapunzel shoestring french fries. <laughs> and I've got an orange dreamsicle dessert milkshakes. I don't know what to even guess, okay? I, I'm going to say that this is, is long. I'm going to say this is $2.1 million. That's too low. It's in Salinas, close to Monterey, Carmel, and Pebble Beach. Okay. <clears throat> well, the bird's eye view is helpful. Uh, it's 15 trillion acres. It's got five swimming pools. Okay, I'm going to say this is a $9 million house. That's too high. It's 4,090 square feet. I would still, I'd, I'd put you at a seven and a half and not a lick under it. It is California. Five bed, five and a half bath. I don't, I, this is very common for me, but I do not really like the design of this. The arms, <laughs> the chairs are facing the wrong direction. Uh, let's, go, let's go down to six then. Not 600,000. What do you think this is? Uh, 2017? 50 acre lot? That's just too fucking much, man. My wife was watching YouTube videos. People were going on housing tours with real estate agents. They were like, this place has 20 acres. I'm like, what do you even do with 20 acres? Like a lawn is nice and like a yard is nice. But after some point, you're like, that shit is just the earth. Like that's the earth's problem. I'm not mowing 50 acres. Like that's just, I, I have custody over some, a part of the earth that's just running wild. Anyway, I don't know. It's, I can't believe it's 50 acres. It's under 6 million. And the house itself is 4,090 square feet. Oh, oh never mind. <laughs> I went the wrong direction. I got lost in the sauce again. Equestrian property with eight stalls for horses. All bedrooms are en suite. Totally private grounds. Well, it seems like that's really up to robbers. I don't, well, it's, it's, it's over six, but under what? Under seven and a half. I think it's seven. I think it's on the higher end. Today's housel was a tough one. It was 6.6 .6 million. That's fine. I don't really like it. I didn't want it anyway. Well, if you're offering. Good co-buying opportunity. We'll get like... 60 close friends. Good, good place for a streamer house, for sure. Okay, so like, you know, it's still Munka S. Because this is Jonestown. I know you're like, it's not Jonestown. No, nah, bro. I don't know if you can read that, but that shit says Jonestown. So like... I don't know when everything went down at Jonestown. Or where it happened. <laughs> Hang on. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know that much about Jonestown at all. I thought it was in the... It's in Africa or South America or the Caribbean. You know who this guy looks like? This guy looks like the dude from the Skype uh, laughing chain. That ancient viral video that goes... You know, Mouth does the really good impression of that guy. You know that one? He looks just like him, man. Um, I'm going to say this was the Dominican Republic in 1981. All things considered, I, I'll be happy with myself here. It was in Guyana. You ever see the interview um, where the Wu-Tang Clan are all extremely high and they're talking about when they saw the news about Jonestown 
and they're like, have you ever seen the photos? They're like, no disrespect to the dead, but they're all passed out and they got the, uh, the Nikes on. They're not even cool Nikes. They're like, uh, the first shoe that Nike ever made. Oh man, that's Heaven's Gate. Sorry, sorry. I got my, I got my cults confused. Wikipedia Malaysia meetup via Wiki, Wikimedia. This is a little bit scary. <laughs> That's Captain Planet. So, Tausag to English Dictionary. I'm just being real with you. You would not catch my ass at a Wikipedia meetup. There's no doubt about that. I would rather go to like a Reddit meetup than a Wikipedia meetup. I would rather that Wikipedia existed than Reddit, but there's no shot I'm going to the meetup, man. I know what you're doing. Oh, I'm just checking my, I'm just checking my texts. You're not checking your texts. I know what you're doing. It's interesting, isn't it? Because you are wearing a mask, but the culture in East Asia, I guess Malaysia is more like Southeast Asia, but the culture in Asia is if you're sick, you wear a mask to begin with, or if like the, you know, it's dust season. So I don't necessarily think this is 2020 or later, but it certainly could be. I remember teaching in South Korea in 2010, 2011, and like kids would come to school with a mask on. And I would talk with the other foreign teachers and be like, wow, isn't it weird that people here wear masks when they're sick? That's crazy. They were ahead of the damn curve, man. Anyway, I don't know. This feels like older. It's not old internet, but it's not current internet to me. I'm going to guess that this is Kuala Lumpur. By the way, great attendance. I can't believe they made a banner. They got three people. One of them is dressed as Captain Planet. You talked about shit. You talk shit about kids to adults? Yeah, like, welcome to the fucking party, pal. What do you think your, your parents were doing any, any time you were busy with a play date? You need to vent somehow. I think this is 2015 in Kuala Lumpur. 2022? Let's go with the meetups in 2022. Wikipedia meetup 2022. Get with the times, Malaysia. Cringe. It's pre-unions. Pre the existence of unions. Johnny Walker ad. Sunlight soap lightens work. I don't know. This is like 19 fucking early. <laughs> it's like 1909. I have no idea. No, you know what? Maybe is maybe this is reconstructing after World War II. Uh, let just give me a second. Okay, so it's London because you. I don't think you can see behind my head, but it says Hammersmith, Hammersmith Line. So this is definitely England or the United Kingdom. Now, here's my thinking, okay? This is tough for me. This could be reconstruction after some destruction. But I feel like this doesn't look like post-World War II. They look like they're dressed pre-World War II. World War I, I don't think London was getting shelled with too much artillery, but I might be showing my age there, or my idiocy, rather. Um, regardless... Maybe they're just building it, but if they're building this shit, they should really tell the train to wait. They should be like, don't drive through it yet. We haven't finished the track. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. It's like, can't this dude throw it in reverse or something like that? He's like, I've been waiting. I got passengers that have been on the train for eight months. Come on, come on. So I don't know. I guess the, logically speaking, the only thing that makes sense to me is that I'm wrong about the, the dress. And this is like immediate post World War II era London or even 
intra World War II era London. Um, and they're just dressed in 1910 style clothes. It was 1903. <laughs> I got zero points for the year. Well, it's going to make it hard to get a, a 40,000 point score. Good job on the location, though. Thank you. Appreciate it. This is Taiwan. My, my guess is that this is Taiwan. People are not wearing masks on their scooters. The photo quality is relatively good. I'm going to say tai, Taipei City circa 2019. It was 2022. They're all so recent. That was a good one, though. That, I, I, at least 9,500 is, is good. That's a good score for once. U2 album covers that go hard. Um, I'm trying to see what this says. It says something land islands company. I want to say that this is like the Jutland islands, but I don't know, um, where those are. <laughs> so, um, I've, am I crazy to think that? Yeah. Okay. Dude, maybe it is. Ah, but this doesn't, I don't know. Why would it be in English? It doesn't really make sense to me. This is like 1983, 82 in North Jutland. Uh, it doesn't, there's not, well, I don't know what I'm talking Oh, it's the oh, UK Marine Guard on duty during the Falklands War. The Falklands. Dude, today's, uh, today's time guesser was like way too British coded for me, man. It was like so British. I'm not British, I'm Canadian. Can I get something from uh, Ottawa Blues Fest 99? 34,000, could be worse. Now this is a damn house. Here's the, the only thing I'm gonna say, you may disagree. And that's fine. It's your right. I don't like these mailboxes. Like this mailbox to me, this, sends, this says I gave up more than like socks and sandals say that I gave up. Like this, this shit looks like a Fisher Price mailbox. You gotta have like a, a metal mailbox, man. I love the house, though. This is like a classic house from like a 90s family movie. It's a nice house. I'm going to say my guess is that this is 2,800 square feet. Trees, beautifully manicured lawn. Oh, they even got the fucking lines in it. Mm. <laughs> How do you do that? How do you get those damn lines in it, man? That looks like when the news used to take a video of someone typing on their computer screen and it would go like, Zzzz. you know what I'm talking about? How do you, how do you get the lines in it, bro? It's all you go, to, you go mow back and forth forever. I see. Holy. Okay. I'm going to say, I, mean, I think this is an $850,000 house. It's in Knoxville, Tennessee. Here we go. All the, all the Tennesseans come out. $850,000 in Knoxville? Bro, Knoxville's a shithole. Yeah, sure, maybe in Nashville, but in Knoxville? No. In Memphis? Memphis? Memphis doesn't even have a come and go, and you think that would... I don't know anything about Nashville, okay? I don't know anything about Tennessee. $500,000. It's, it's much lower. $350,000. They got, we got to come up with a better clue than single family home. It's been single family homes literally 100% of the time. Okay, it's more than 350. 
we're in full binary search. 425. How about 450? How about 437.5? Did I say 2,800 square feet or did I say 2,800 square feet? That's the real listed dot fund. It's $442,500. Oh, bang on. Holy. Why is the house in square feet and a lot is in acres? This is the kind of shit that annoys me. Like, shouldn't we keep the units constant so we have some degree of comparison? Like, I don't know what the hell 0 0.35 acres is. How much more... Grass is there than house. Just the square meters? That would be fine. There's 43,000 square feet in an acre. See, that's good to know. I think it would be nice if it said 2,700 square feet and then like a 12,000 square foot lot. Then I would be like, oh shit, you got like, you know, 84% of your... Land is covered by land instead of house. That's so easy to compare. And don't even get me started on the very viral tweet over the past couple of days. I, and I quote, by paraphrasing, my most American opinion is that Fahrenheit is the superior method for uh, doing temperature. It just makes sense. Zero is cold, 100 is hot, and then everything else is like a percentage from zero to 100. Clicked on their fucking profile. You're American. That's not your most, every opinion you have is your most American opinion. You can't, you don't have a frame of reference to compare it to anything else because you grew up immersed in it. Then they said, I know that Celsius might be better for science stuff. Lady, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> That's not the one you use for science stuff either. Shit drives me crazy. Anyway, what else we got here? Listed. We still got Traveler, and then we added Puck Doku. I have not looked at Puck Doku here today. So it's going to be fresh. There we go. Today I'd like to go from Ireland to Montenegro. Okay. Um, I think that... So here's what I'm thinking. We should go to the UK. Because then from the UK, can't we pick any country in Northern Europe? <laughs> Can I go straight from the UK to like Poland or something like that and then go, no? You can only go to France? Okay, why can't I go from, oh, I see. I can't go from Ireland to France directly because Ireland and the UK share a land border. Right. And then there's a road which connects the UK and France under the English Channel. Because otherwise, I guess my ass was like, why don't we just go from Ireland like straight to Poland? Because we'll just go, we'll just take the, the next nautical border. Anyway, so I, I, think, I think you're right. I think you've got to go United Kingdom. It's critical path. You're forced to go to France, I think. Okay, it's critical path. Fair enough. From France, it's a no-brainer. Take me straight to Germany. Covers a lot of ground here. What? <laughs> Up to Italy. Oh. Uh, take me to Austria. Not cooked. We're back on the critical path. From Austria, take me to Croatia. Okay. I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not above throwing in like a little Slovenia. Just, just, to, just to give them some credit. Oh, I didn't know that we were, they were touching there. Okay. NL, please. Well, we crushed it. We, we win one guess over the, over the optimum. That's not bad. 
Italy, yes, Italy made more sense than Germany, but like not by much. Oh, the, oh right, US, dude, U.S. state is also good to keep you fresh. Just to keep you fresh. Travel USA. Today I'd like to go from Mississippi to California. Okay, we did that yesterday. <laughs> so now, you guys can all leave now because we'll, we'll go to the hockey one. All right. Vancouver Calder Trophy winner. Easiest uh, guess of my life. Elias Pettersson. 73%. Buffalo Sabres Calder Trophy winner. Tyler Myers. That's a gimme. 74%. New York Islanders called their trophy winner. I want to say John Tavares. No, no, no. I want to say Matt Barzal. I want to say Matt Barzal. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Now think about it for a second here. This is where things get a little tougher, okay? This is where things get a little tougher. I like to think about famous players. You got your Mario Lemuse, your Yarmir Yagers. You got your, um, got your Sidney Crosby's, your Evgeny Malkins. You've got your uh, Phil Kessels. You've got your Chris Letangs. Okay, how about this one? We got some Ray Borks. Go back. You got some Phil Espositos. You got some Pat LaFontaine's. I feel, oh, but that's the, we should, there should be a Vancouver Boston connection. Wasn't our fourth line center last year? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, this one. Give me a Jared McCann. It just popped into my head. Okay, I'll take the 8% on that one. Our fourth line center last year, Lazar, was from the Bruins. Boom. Okay, that's what it means to be a Vancouver Canucks fan, okay? Naslin makes way more sense now that I'm looking. Okay, now let me think about this. This is an easy one. Zdeno Chara, traded by Mike Milbury from the Islanders to the Senators, where he then went to the Bruins, okay? Islanders... Who's, who's a freaking stud? What about Kenny Janssen? Did he ever play for the... No? Brian Bedard? Pat LaFontaine? Miroslav Satan? I feel like Satan played for the Penguins as well. Miroslav Satan? Oh! <laughs> and then Islanders, Penguins. Can I get a little... Is there a chance that Zygmunt Palfi played for both of them? Is there a chance Zygmunt Palfi played for both of them? Maybe. Let me think about this for a second. I feel like you have a goalie overlap, but it's hard because most of your goalies have been ass for like a while. Tom Barrasso? Tom Barrasso? Did you, did you play for the Islanders, Tom Barrasso? You got to tell me if you play for the Islanders, okay? Let me think about this for a second. Dominic Hasek, no shot. Patrick Laleem, don't think so. Gary Cheevers, don't think so. Tuka Rask, no chance, they wish. I'm thinking of, of long-time all-stars, okay? You got your John Tavares's. You got your Matthew Barzals. You got your fucking Brian Trottier's. Definitely played for the Penguins for a bit. Oh, eat my shit. This one should be the easiest one. I'm, I'm confused about why I'm having so much trouble with this, okay? But you just got to rack your... What about Phil Housley? I don't know if he ever played for the Bruins. Did Phil Housley ever play for the Bruins? What about Donald Odette? What about Jason Dawes? What about Matthew Barnaby? What about Cam Neely? What about... I don't think so. I think you're gonna, it's, it's going to be a goalie connection here. Is it, is it just Linus Ulmark? No. Oh, yeah, yes! <laughs> Woo! He's crazy. Is, is this a good uniqueness score? Let me view some stats on this one. Uh, okay, Taylor Hall, Riley Sheary, Tyler Myers. Louis Erickson makes more sense. Who did I pick? Curtis Lazar. That's because I'm an old head. This was the toughest one. Marcus Naslund. Greatest trade in Canucks history, maybe. Elias Pettersson. That's a gimme. Chara Trottier Barzal. 
average score 6.2. We got a simple 9 out of 9. Whatever. What, like it's hard? All right, slash marker. <laughs> Zygmunt Palfi would have worked too. Ah! Great name too. 